What's up everybody? My name is Lucas Gomez and today we're going to talk about the warp wall. More specifically, what shoes I think are best for the warp wall. And these are also the shoes I think are best for obstacle course and Ninja Warrior training in general. But before we get to that, a brief history lesson. So the warp wall is a 14 and a half foot curved wall that competitors have to run up as seen on the TV show Ninja Warrior. I've faced this obstacle twice in my Ninja Warrior career. My brother has faced this obstacle four times in his Ninja Warrior career. And so far we are six for six. We have a 100% success rate on this obstacle. You get three attempts on the obstacle before you're disqualified. And we've never even had to use our second attempt. We've always gotten it on the first try. And I'm not saying that to brag because I really think this is a tough obstacle and I spent a lot of time working on it. I talk to people all the time who really underestimate this obstacle. They see it on TV, they think it's super easy, they think anybody can do it. But I actually know somebody personally who competed with me during season 8 of the show in Atlanta who was over 6 feet tall who ended up getting disqualified because he couldn't make it up the warp wall. So it's not just about being tall. We see countless examples of this every year on the show. They show people on TV who are 6 feet tall, sometimes even taller, and they can't get up the warp wall. Being tall definitely helps, but it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be able to do it. And we see people who are really short successfully make it up the warp wall all the time. There's definitely a method to the warp wall. There are some specific things that you can do that will help you be way more successful when you try it out. And the cool thing is there are Ninja Warrior gyms popping up all over the place these days. So there's probably a gym near you with the warp wall at it in case you want to try. I wanted to take a minute to share a few of the things I've learned along the way about how to do the warp wall. Check it out. So I'm going to start with something that might seem obvious, but it's something I've seen a lot of people do, and that's don't get too much run-up space. If you start too far away from the wall, by the time you actually get there, you're slowing down and you tire yourself out, as funny as that might sound. And second reason is, on the show you only have a limited amount of space, so you want to practice it that way. Here's a clip of me doing it with very little room, which is a really good thing to practice, especially for when you get to the finals in Vegas. All right, so here's a clip of me running up the warp wall. We obviously want a lot of speed when we come at the wall, but I want you to pay attention to something right here. This is the moment when you have to absolutely hit the jets. You can honestly be jogging at the warp wall, but if right when your foot hits this point, you really commit, you can make it up. So I get three steps in total, and I really commit the moment my foot hits the curvature of that wall. I'll let you watch it one more time. Three steps, in my opinion, is ideal. Some people prefer four, but I would say at least three, and at the maximum four. All right, guys, last thing before we talk shoes, and that's this. When you are trying to do the warp wall, constantly remind yourself to run up the wall, not at the wall. As you watch these examples, you're gonna notice that my chest is leaning forward, that I'm sprinting straight ahead, and that's gonna cause you to just smack right into the wall. Once your foot hits the curvature of that wall, I'm not telling you to lean back, but I am saying you have to maintain a certain distance between your torso and the wall. If you're leaning into it, you're not gonna be able to make it all the way up. You're just gonna smack right into it. Watch this one where my chest is a bit further away. Even my gaze, look where my eyes are focused. I'm focused on the top of the wall and look at the distance between my chest and the wall at this point. I'm not leaning forward, I'm not leaning into the wall. And the reason I said I'm not telling you to lean back is because that can get dangerous. If you're leaning back and you really jump and commit at the top, you could fall and if you do fall, you're gonna fall straight backwards. It's not gonna be pretty. So don't lean back, but you don't lean forward either. As you run up, it just make sure your chest is up and that your gaze is focused at the top of the wall. All right guys, last piece of the puzzle is this right here and that's your very last step. It's not as much of a step as it is a jump. The moment you get to that third or fourth step on the wall, make sure you jump, make sure you reach with both hands and fully commit to it. That's gonna help you reach the top. And for all those people out there who are curious, I'm sure somebody's watching this and is curious how tall this warp wall is. This warp wall is 14 and a half feet. It's at Ninja Lounge in North Miami. And that's a good thing that it's 14 and a half feet. It's the same size as the one on the show. So ideally you wanna practice on something that's the same size or bigger than the one on the show so you know you're ready. All right guys, moment of truth. What is the best shoe for the warp wall and for Ninja Warrior training in general? Is it the Fresh Foam Zantes by New Balance? Love these shoes. Or another great shoe, Ontisuka Tigers. All right, and the reason these are the two shoes being called into question is this, I will explain to you. So Tigers, I've been seeing people wear these for a long time. My brother and I competed in these season eight of Ninja Warrior, season seven we did not. Season seven we competed in some Bobo shoes because we didn't know what we were doing. But luckily we got some guidance and some direction from our boy Drew, the real life ninja Drew Dreschel. Drew actually let Alexio borrow these um, during season eight. Um, that's, that's a long, crazy story. But anyway, he let Alexio borrow his shoes. Alexio actually ran in Tigers that belonged to Drew. So he had magic powers. That's why he did so well. Um, so yeah, man, Tigers are awesome. These shoes are super light. I love the way these fit my foot. 
and they, I mean, they stick. They stick really well. And then, of course, the tie, I mean, the balance, the new balances, the Fresh Foam Zantes. And let me tell you why I even got these in the first place. Jake Murray, member of the Wolf Pack. Everybody loves that guy. Ran stage one in a fanny pack. Like, what more do you want? He ate a corn dog right after he hit the buzzer and then jumped in the water. So that guy. Jake Murray, awesome dude. He's just one of many people. Another guy, my friend Kaye, told me to get these shoes. I tried out these shoes and I love these shoes, right? So again, the Ninja Warrior community, they, they, they wear lots of different shoes, but I would say that no, no other shoes are worn more than Tigers and Zantes. A lot of people wear Olos. I've had a pair of Olos, I like them, but I much prefer these two shoes. Um, some people wear, you know, they're called KOs, and those are great parkour shoes. But these two shoes are the most popular these days, and I wanted to address it. I like both of these shoes, but I will tell you that the New Balance Fresh Foam Zante is my favorite shoe. I do prefer this shoe for the sole purpose, <laughs> sole purpose, sole, <laughs> and actually, actually the reason has to do with the sole. This sole sticks to obstacles like it's nobody's business. Listen, the Tigers, they stick really well too, but the Fresh Foam Zantes take the cake. You guys are probably watching some clips right now of me doing some stuff in these. I've never worn shoes that stick more to any obstacle than these in my life. Try it out and, and you know comment below if you own either of these shoes, if you've worn either of these shoes, if you own a pair of shoes that you think would, would beat either of these shoes. I find it hard to believe that there's a shoe out there that's stickier than these. You know, maybe there's a pair that's lighter, uh, more comfortable, whatever. But I find these to be comfortable. I will say, I find the Tigers to be more comfortable. These are more comfortable on my foot. I feel better in them. But if you want to talk about how much it sticks to the obstacle, and that's really most important to me, man. Like, when it comes to how light it is, how durable it is, a lot of that's interchangeable. There's going to be minor differences. But th there's a major difference when you try these on. These shoes stick to obstacles like crazy. So I would recommend getting a pair of New Balance Fresh Foam Zantes. I wish I saw a video like this before I competed on the show my first time. Um, but hey, hopefully you see this video before you ever get into parkour or uh, especially Ninja Warrior if you ever want to compete in, uh, in local competitions or especially on the show. Make sure you got the right gear. New Balance Fresh Foam Zantes in my book are the best Ninja Warrior shoe. If you disagree, comment below. Peace out. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you want to see last week's video, click right here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, click over here. Or don't. I am not a beggar. But it is free, so. Or just, just do it. Just do it. Right there. Click the button. Go ahead. Click it. I'll wait.